Hello, Daytona Beach, Volusia County. Those of you all across the state of Florida, across the United States, and we love the fact that even though we're in this pandemic and we cannot meet physically, that there are still actually people around the world who get to tune in. So from all of us at Whitechapel Church, thank you. Stay with us. You know where we're coming from. Now listen, write in your chat there. Let us know where you're at. Where are you watching this service from? Put in your city and state and uh, let us know where you're coming from. We want to also say thank you for all of you who continue to give financially and support the ministries that God is doing through Whitechapel Church. Not only what you see, but there's also many things behind the scenes that we've been doing and been working on that we think are going to help spread the gospel around the world. So continue to give. We make it very easy to do that. Even though you cannot come in person, you can give online. And so watch this short video as it gives a quick tutorial of how to give easily online. Giving online is quick, easy, and secure. Head to whitechapelchurch.com forward slash give. On the give page, there's a button that says give here. Click that. It'll take you to the secure give website where you can log in or sign up for the first time. After you're logged in, go ahead and click to donate. Once you do that, you can enter your tithe amount or select other giving. After that, you can select one time or recurring giving your credit card information and you can add a message if you like. You don't have to though. After that, hit submit and you're all set. Thanks for giving to church. Again, thank you for your generosity. God is doing big things here at Whitechapel Church and he's doing big things because of you and through you. Let's pray together and ask God to just open our hearts and our minds that we would be ready and willing to receive all that he has for us today. Let's pray. God, thank you so much that nothing can stop your gospel from being spread. God, thank you so much that even though we cannot meet with people that we love and see them in person, God, you in your person of the Holy Spirit are always right inside of those of us who believe. So we are never far from you. We are never hidden from you. God, thank you so much for being the God that's close and, and we can have a personal relationship with. Lord, today as we listen, we pray that you would open our hear, ears. Lord, that we would hear exactly what you want to say to us. And God, I pray that every one of us who are listening, that not only would we hear, but God, that we would move from our seats into action. God, that we would put feet on our prayers and we would do what you are calling us to do. Lord, we love you and we thank you so much for all the love that you have for us. Lord, we're excited today. We are going to worship you in spirit and in truth through singing as loud as we can right in our homes, through listening intently to what you have to say. So, Lord, we love you. Thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, hey, no matter where you're at, stand up. Stand up in your pajamas. Stand up. Push that cereal to the side. Let's stand and let's worship our almighty God.
since you called me deeper still as 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 you called me deeper still you called me deeper still into love 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 your good good father to you are to you are to you are and I'm loved by you to I am to I am to I am your good good father to you are to you are to you are and I'm loved by you to I am to I am to I am Lord, we thank you so much for this time of worship, God. We thank you that you are so generous, God. You're so gracious and you're so faithful. We thank you so much for your salvation, God. We thank you that we can rest on your word, Lord. Have your way in our hearts. Move in our midst, no matter the circumstance. In Jesus' name. 
Amen. When you work up a big thirst, you can have a drink, or you can have Gatorade Thirst Quencher. The professional thirst quencher. Other drinks wet down the thirst. Gatorade quenches it. Gatorade is different than juices or fruit drinks or soda pop or water. Research men created it. Thousands of athletes swear by it. Gatorade Thirst Quencher. The professional thirst quencher. Hey, that makes you want to run to the kitchen and get a big bottle of Gatorade, doesn't it? And just in case you didn't know, Gatorade was invented by a professor at the University of Florida. So, hey, go Gators. And I can't hear any Seminole fans objecting right now. So, hey, my time to give a plug for Gatorade. But here's the thing with Gatorade. Why they make a claim to be the professional quench or thirst quencher, it's really not all that. It's got some good stuff in it. But, you know, the go-to thirst quencher is water. And so when we, we think about water, it's essential we, we have to have water. And, and just some, some fun facts about water. Uh, you can survive two months without food, but you cannot survive more than a week without water. And so we begin to understand just how important water is. Water is uh, really the, the lifeline for who we are and what we are. We have to have water. And then also, um, when we think about water, two-thirds of our body is made up of water. When you think about that, two-thirds of, of our body consists of water and how water is, is just, it's just a part of everything we are. And, and there's an estimate that by the time, if you were to live 70 years, that you would drink over your lifetime a ton and a half of water. Now, that's crazy. We used to have a, a pool in West Palm, and it held 10,000 gallons. I don't know how much that weighs. I think water weighs like seven and a half gallons uh, or pound per gallon. But here's the thing. That's a lot of water. We need water to live. And we were talk, we've been talking over the, the year about Exodus and the Israelites. And so if you remember the story, I'm sure you do, Moses has led them out of slavery. They're no longer under the bondage of the Egyptians. And, and so they're, they're on their way to the promised land. And they get into the desert. And there's this essential need for water. There's no water. And so immediately the lack of water brings the Israelites to begin to say, and this is in Exodus, Exodus 17, the Israelites say to, to Moses, give us water. And they were grumbling against Moses, and they were angry against Moses. And they said to him, why did you bring us out, out of Egypt to die in the desert? Us and our livestock, we're all going to die. And so the lack of water had them already thinking, we'd rather go back and be in slavery where we at least had a drink of water than be in the desert and die for a lack of water. And then Moses goes to God, and God says, hey, strike the rock, and water will come out. Water will come out, and out of that water... Flows life. And so today we're going to talk about water and how out of water life flows. And so I want to ask you this question. Um, what's the thirstiest you have ever been? I want to share a story with you, and it's actually going to be on video, um, about the thirstiest I have ever been in my life. So take a look at the video. Well, I'm here at James Street Park, and this is the scene of the story I'm about to share with you. I was at 12 years old, was playing midget league football and enjoyed it a lot. And the next year, as I'm a 13-year-old, I'm looking forward to playing again. Uh, the only problem was I had grown three or four inches that year, and, and there's a weight limit uh, on the uh, midget league football. And so as a 13-year-old, I was over the weight limit, and uh, I had to lose about five pounds. Now, I didn't have five pounds to lose. I was skinny as a toothpick, so um, that was a problem. Well, the coach came up with the idea, and he said, come to the James Street Park here where I am, and, and um, We'll, uh, we'll see if we can get some water weight out of you. You know, the body has a lot of water in it. And so um, I came that morning, there were three or four other guys who were in the same predicament that I was, and, and he, made, he, start, he made us start running. He's gonna sweat uh, that water out of us. And then he put us on the scale, so I jump on the scale, and I, I'm still over the weight limit of 130 pounds. And so it's run some more, and still wasn't under the weight limit. So at this point, if I wanted to play, he said, well, you're gonna have to get in my Volkswagen bug. 
and uh, he put me in his Volkswagen and it's the middle of the summer and he turns the heater on and so I'm sitting in this Volkswagen uh, Volkswagen bug and and uh, I am sweating bullets I mean it is hot and I am so thirsty still wasn't losing weight enough weight to get under it finally he he wraps me in in, in plastic uh, in some uh, garbage bags and puts me back in the Volkswagen and it looks like I'm under the weight and I'm just dying, dying of thirst. Crazy story, right? That a coach would actually yeah, do something like that so that I would be eligible to play. I was eligible to play, but I can tell you, when I came out of that couple hours of, of sweating, I needed something to drink. I needed some water. I drank a lot of water, I'm sure. I drank some Gatorade, and I had to hydrate myself. But here's the thing that we need to understand is that we can drink and, and quench our thirst, but never be hydrated. So we can quench our thirst on, on the, the products that are out there, and it may not hydrate us. And it's the same in, in our life that we could quench our thirst for life, but not hydrate our soul. We have to hydrate our soul. And so water is not just a physical life. Water is eternal life. And that's what uh, Jesus is going to talk about in the scripture in John chapter 4. I hope you've been doing the readings with us. And so each day we give you a reading. And this week we've been in John chapter 4. And as we've talked about John, uh, we've, as we've read John chapter 4, the very first 15 verses, um, and I was, as I was reading that and I heard Jesus talking about living water, I just got to tell you, it was in that I thought this is what I think the Lord would have me to share today. It's the living water that gives us life. And so as we're in a pandemic, I think we're kind of evaluating everything there is. So let's look at John chapter 4, four the first 15 verses. And, and in these verses, really what we have here is the story of the Samaritan woman. Now I want to tell you there's probably a dozen or more sermons that I could have spoke on. There's so much content there. But as I looked at it and I understood the story, here's, what it, here's the context of it. So, so Jesus is on his way to Galilee, and he's got to go through Samaria. And so as he's going through Samaria, the disciples are off buying food, and so he, he gets thirsty. He needs to hydrate. It's hot. He's, he's been walking. And he gets to Jacob's well, and he has nothing to draw the water with. Isn't that how it is sometimes in life? We, we have what we need, but we don't have the ability to draw the water and drink it. And so, so Jesus sees a woman coming, and it's a Samaritan woman. Now, we have to understand that in that day and age, the Jews and the Samaritans were not friendly with each other. There was a, a high level of really racism, if you would, or at least a cultural divide that separated them. And so the Jews looked down on the Samaritans because they had intermarried, and, and they, didn't even, they wouldn't allow them to worship with them. And so uh, Jesus or any Jew a respectable Jew wouldn't speak to a Samaritan. And on top of that, you have the culture where it wasn't proper for a man to speak to a woman. And so this woman comes to the well, and Jesus uh, says to her, Ma'am, will you draw me some water? And her response was, Who am I to draw you water? For I am a Samaritan woman, and you are a Jewish man. And so they had that, that moment of reality where Jesus broke the barrier. And Jesus talk to her. And so that in itself was a surprise to her. And so she drew him some water. And so that's the story that we have here. And as we look at that story, the first thing I would ask you in this is, is has the pandemic, pandemic created a thirst for something more in you? Has this pandemic created something more in your heart where, where you crave something more, that we need some living water? Because the water, the things of this earth do not meet the deep craving of our soul. In fact, the things that we are used to having that have been taken away, we find maybe there's this void in our heart, this void in our life where we no longer are experiencing some of the fulfillment of our cravings because we can't fulfill them by, by entertainment or, or going out to dinner or whatever the case would be. And so as we, as we look at that this morning, as we talk about it, I want you to see that John 4, 14, it says, Who, Jesus said, whoever drinks the water I give, they will never thirst again. Whoever drinks the water that I give, they will, they will never thirst again. That's an amazing statement, if you would. And, and I know in this moment, the Samaritan woman had to be wondering, well, as she said, well, what kind of water is this? Give me that water so I don't have to keep coming to this well. And so as the story keeps going, um, we see that, that uh, Jesus talks to her about that. But in this moment, um, we, we need to understand that the living water that Jesus gives us as he talks to the, the, the Samaritan woman 
It hydrates our soul. And I love the scripture in Psalms 1, 1 and 3. This scripture talks about how, how that takes place. And so, blessed is the one, it says, who delights in the law of the Lord who delights in the law of the Lord and who meditates on his word day and night. This person is like a tree. Now get this. They're like a tree planted by the streams of water, which yields its fruit in season and whose leaf does not wither. Whatever they do prospers. As we drink of the living water that God has for us, we won't wither. It's not like drinking uh, this water where we, we got to hydrate again. It doesn't fulfill in the same way. We'll never wither. And I love that last scripture where it says, whatever we do will prosper. Now, that doesn't mean that we won't have hard times. It doesn't mean that we won't have hardships. But what it really means is even in the midst of those, we can prosper. One of my observations during this pandemic is that we are actually, as a ministry and, and as personally, I feel like I'm flourishing in this season. Yeah, there's some hardships. There's a lot of things I miss. And, and, and one of those is, is our new grandbaby. If you haven't heard, we have a, a granddaughter named Reese. She's um, a little over a week old now, but we can't even touch her. There's some things that have been taken away from us. But even in the midst of that, to praise God for new life and, and the prosperity that we experience, even in the difficult times, even in the moments where we don't really experience what the world can give us, it should create a craving for the things that God should give us. And so we see here that this craving, it takes place they, takes place here, and this living water can, can hydrate our soul. And this is probably the most simple sermon that I, I would ever speak. It's just so simple. We need living water. So if you were to take one thing away, because that's about all I'm going to give you today, is that you need living water. You need this living water. Look what... Um, took place in, in John chapter 4, 15 in this story about the Samaritan woman. In John 4, 15, the woman says to him, give me this water so that I won't thirst anymore and I won't have to keep coming here to, to draw water. You see, in our, in our spiritual life, if we're not drinking the living water, we're constantly going into the world and we're dipping out that water and we're trying to create, uh, uh, quench our thirst with the things of this world and nothing will quench our thirst like the living water that Jesus gives us. And so we need to understand, just as the Samaritan woman was trying to understand, what is, what is this living water that you're talking about? And then it goes on in John, or John chapter 7, there's another scripture where Jesus is speaking, John 7, verse 37. And it says, On the last day, the great day of the feast, Jesus stood and cried out, saying to anyone, If anyone thirsts, let him come to me and drink. If anyone thirsts, let them come to me and drink. You could be in a place right now where you are just emotionally wore out from all that's going on in our world. You may be experiencing moments of anxiety, moments of fear, moments of trust. You're probably experiencing emotions, a range of emotions that's really all over the place. But in, in this moment, as we would see the scripture, Jesus says, come to me and drink. Come to me and drink. And so the question is, is, do you crave to drink the living water? You know, it's a craving. I, I think about cravings, and I don't know about you, but I get these cravings from time to time. Now, this week, I don't know if it fits in the category of a craving, but I desired very deeply to get a haircut. And so on Monday, you know, as you know, the, the beauty salons and, for me, a barber shop, they all open. I waited for over an hour to get a haircut because I so desired, I so craved to get that hair off of my ears and it's just bothering me. So we, so we have these cravings in life and they're, and they're real. They're, they're our physical life, we have these cravings and one of my, oh, my go-to cravings, it's almost every night, I gotta watch it there, is mint chocolate chip ice cream. And so I can just start thinking about mint chocolate chip ice cream and, and that craving begins to arise. And so we have all these cravings in life and the question that we have to answer is, do we crave living water? Think about that for a moment. Do you crave living water? The water that Jesus gives. And so I think the first question that we, one of the questions we would ask ourselves in this moment is, well, exactly what is living water? What is living water? Well, I would say this to you, that, that the living water that we have is twofold. One is the Word of God. When we drink of the Word of God, it quenches our thirst and it hydrates our soul. That's why we're so emphasizing in, in a discipleship moment for each of us that we grow 
in our cravings for living water, that we would grow in our craving to, to sit with the Lord, even if it's just for a few moments each day, to open up the Word of God and to drink from the living water. Because out of the Scripture flows life. And the other part of the living water is the, our, our access to the Holy Spirit. And so again, that's why we ask questions. That's why we want to begin to think differently when we pray. To ask questions of Jesus. To ask questions of God. And ask Him to really speak to us. And, and then begin to record those things and, and begin to understand that the Holy Spirit is living water. And He speaks to us. And, and we need to learn to know His voice. And so the living water is, is the Word of God. And the living water is the Holy Spirit in our life. There are these things that, that oftentimes just rob us. They just rob us of, of who we are. They, they rob us of that deep living water that God has for us. He has a deep living water that He wants us to drink of. Jesus said to the Samaritan woman, drink of this water. He said to her, if you knew who you were talking to, you would ask me for living water." Do you know who you're praying to? Do you know that we serve a God who gives us a living water, a water that will quench our soul? I can't emphasize enough how important it is for us to drink of the Word of God and to receive from the Holy Spirit. Because here's what I think we often experience. A bunch of dehydrated Christians or dehydrated people who are trying to follow Christ, but, but we're like the Israelites in the desert. We're craving for water, and, and we don't see the water, and so we, run, we want to run back to slavery, perhaps, to experience that water. When God says, no, I have, a, I have a land for you, a land flowing with milk and honey. I have a living water for you. And we have to get out of the mindset that this world can fulfill our deep spiritual need, or even the understanding or even the lack of understanding that some of our spiritual need we're trying to meet in the things of this world. It's the living water. And so this next week, I really encourage you to, to consider um, really drinking deeply from the Word of God. And so this coming week, starting tomorrow, we'll be in John chapter 5, and, and um, we're going to speak next week on John chapter 5 as well. And so as we drink of this living water, you are going to begin to feel your soul being hydrated. Now, here's the thing about water. You just can't drink it once and you're hydrated for life. We have to drink every day. In fact, they tell us we need to drink a half of water every day to really hydrate our physical bodies. So if, if, we, just, if we just spend five minutes in the Word of God each week or each day, and, and that begins to hydrate who we are, that begins to hydrate our soul every day. And so if I'm going to live off yesterday's living water, I'm going to find myself today spiritually hydrated, drying up. And so I hope the simple, the simple message here is one that you'll really receive because I'm going to tell you it is one that absolutely will change your life. And so I want to do this. Even there where you are, whether it's on your phone or your TV or your computer, whatever the case would be, just for us to take a moment of reflection and just think about the living water. And so let's just slow it down and let's just don't hit the end button and go on to what we're doing. But in this moment, let's experience what God might say to us. And so this uh, little video is just going to encourage us in this moment to reflect on what God is going to say to us.
I hope in the moment of reflection that you have come to a place where you crave the living water that only Jesus can give us. In Matthew 5, 6, he told us this, that blessed are those who hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they will be filled. And so we can drink deeply of the word of God and it will fill us. And before I pray and before we go into a, another day and into a, another week, I want to read this last scripture out of Revelation chapter 22, verse 17. It says, And the Spirit and the bride say, Come, and let him who hears say, Come, and let him who thirsts come. Whoever desires, let him take the water of life freely. He who desires, take the water of life freely. So let's pray. Father, we thank you today that you are a God who gives us living water, that you are a God who gives us life. And as you have said in John chapter 10, 10, that you have come, that we would have life and have it in fullness, in completeness. But Lord, we understand that if we don't drink of your living water daily and hydrate our soul, that we're living dried up. So Father, help us as we commit ourselves to you and to one another to read of the word and to share, Lord, those things that you're teaching and showing us with those, Lord, in our discovery groups and discovery partners or, or just a friend or a spouse, whatever the case would be. Lord, may we drink deeply of the living water that you give us. And we ask it all in the name of, uh, of your son, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Hey, listen, have a great week. Hey, and if there's anything you need, we just want to let you know that you can contact us. Um, and we'll have it here. on It's on, right here on the screen that, that if you need us, you can contact us through email, Instagram, Facebook. You can call the church office, 386-767-5470. Just give us a call. We're here for you, uh, and we want to know that you're doing well. And so God bless you, and we hope to see you as soon as we can in face. God bless.